Am I a crypto expert? No. So, um, why am I doing this? Hmm. Well, let's see. The tech is quite interesting. Not a lot of documentation is out there. Crypto might have quite an impression on our lives. And so, you know, just having an understanding on to like, you know, how it might work and how it might actually be applied in our everyday lives. Eh, might be interesting. And I already had a lot of images on the side just because I generated a lot of fake images from my GAN network. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and click on that button. But yeah, why can't I not go ahead and just, you know, deploy these images as an NFT and, you know, see, just see what happens. And so I just narrowed down the bulk aspect of how to deploy as many images as I can with using as few resources as I can. And I came up with the idea of just using ERC 1155 to do just that. And with all things that are really quite interesting, there's actually quite a bit of prerequisites to actually begin creating your own NFT project. Make sure to have a MetaMask wallet or something very similar that allows you to transfer crypto coins from point A to point B. This will usually be a browser extension of sorts. I use the Rinkeby test network. This is just a network meant for testing your NFT deployments to identify any potential bugs in your metadata file or contracts. All the coins associated with the Rinkeby test network are free of charge, so you can test without a cost implication. But do be wary of using the mainnet where this is just interface with live Ethereum because mainnet deployments cost real Ethereum. You're also going to need Node.js, which is capable of executing JavaScripts. For deploying the actual NFT contracts and pushing assets to the contract, I use Remix for deployment. I will be using off blockchain asset management primarily due to the associated fees if you were to store the data on the blockchain. So the IPFS network conduit I use is Pinata Cloud. This is a decentralized server that can host your data and it's actually really quite easy to use. Okay, so to make our lives a little bit easier, go ahead and clone this particular repository, Spencer Powell NFT. I forked this repository from Neha01 NFT. There are just a lot of really, really great scripts uh, involving with this particular repository, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use it without you know creating it from scratch. Um, so there's particularly like two files in particular that we will be using for this. And this will just be helping us with our uh, renaming of our files. So I have a bunch of images. Uh, these were generated by my GAN, if you want to check that out, right hand corner. Um, but nonetheless, these are really nifty images and I just want to put them on the ethernet. So let's go ahead and uh, take get out of all these images and we need to rename these so these these needs to be ordered in a hexadecimal format um, and so one of the ways to do that is to run two scripts uh, regardless on what it is named in this case I have fakes oh 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 well, four zeros and a two zero um, I'd go ahead and run Python utils and this particular uh, file address the rename file sequentially that just went ahead and renamed all of our, all of our files one through sixteen uh, which is what we want because when you could be using the next part which will be the node.js part and that will just be uh, renaming your files once more into hexadecimal formats uh, and so this will just be rename files or rename images to numbered sequence and then voila we have it from 1 to f which is 1 to 16. i think it was 1 to 16. 1 to 15, sorry, uh, hexadecimal formats. And that is all we need for the images. And now let's go to Pinata over here. Let's go ahead and upload our particular folder. And let's go ahead and upload that to our particular folder, which is just the images folder. Go ahead and upload that. And we should have, let's see, YouTube test images. Go ahead and upload that. And then this is, this is where our pictures will be hosted on the IP, IPFS, as I mentioned earlier, and this is just a decentralized network that will store all of our metadata and our images, uh, so we don't need to worry about doing on-chain transactions. So that has been successfully uploaded. Refresh, there you go. It was, oops, there you go, YouTube test images. And that is that. So let's go ahead and check out our metadata. First, we want to go ahead and look at the config JSON. And this is where we would just need to go ahead and set up our metadata file. Notice that you can you know, associate it, some additional attributes to each one of your photos, your JPEGs, PNGs, and whatnot. And it's typed up a really quick description as to what this is. And then probably the most important part of this aspect is getting the CID code for 
uh, the IPFS colon with the two slash marks. So we want to copy here with the folder that we just uploaded, OPR images folder. Go ahead and copy that and paste it right here. And that is really all you need to do. So looking at the other script within the utils will be the create metadata. This is what this is doing. Uh, lots of code here. But what this, well, what all we need to do is just to do node utils, go ahead and create the metadata. And notice that uh, one of our files or folders was populated, not migrations, but metadata. And notice that since we're going to be using the ERC 1155 contract, it has to be in a hexadecimal format with 64 bit uh, padding of zeros. Um, so that is what that looks like. So we're going to have 64 characters and, you know, the more images that we have, we're still going to have 64 characters. It's just going to be padded with zeros. So once we have that, let's go ahead and go back to the pinata. Go ahead and do another upload, another folder. We're we'll uploading our metadata this time. So let's go to metadata. Go ahead and upload that. Let's name this YouTube test metadata. Go ahead and upload that and file successfully uploaded sweet just that we're hitting all of our bases the metadata file that was outputted notice that we have the associated metadata at a json we have a png also notice we have number 10 and then as we continue down the list you can see it being updated uh, to its corresponding number and it's you know um, it's png so that script array does that for you so all of your metadata files have been established and all of your files are, are you know, located on the IPFS via Pinata. So let's go ahead and check out the deployment phase. So this is probably the most important part actually, when it comes to actually you know, pushing your stuff so that everyone else can see it and it's being hosted on open seas or rareable. So all of my given contracts, uh, they're all located here. I'm also using the same contracts uh, that was provided by Neha, but this is, uh, you can just go ahead and copy and paste this particular code on over to remix where you just you know right click on contracts click on new file and then you can just copy and paste that code on over so there's a few files uh, that overall i've pretty much just copy and pasted on over that's the art collectibles.soul that is located right here and we have the bulk mint nfts which is located over here, bulk mint NFT. So go ahead and you know copy and paste that on over. So let's go ahead and look at this most simple mints ERC. So what we want to do is that we want to replace this uh, particular string, the insert metadata CID from IPFS. Go ahead and delete that. Go back to your IPFS, look for your metadata file, and then copy your CID. Go ahead and do that and then go back to your IPFS address and paste that on over here. And this should generally be what your what your file location should be. And this is the ERC 1155. Now let's go ahead and check out this part. This is where it's, it's iteratively sending all of your files over to be minted. Uh, and so we can see here, this is the token ID, zero, one, and two. Uh, those are equivalent to, let's see, uh one two oh so there's an issue right here we just want to change this to like a one because that's that's just the token id so you have one two three and then one two three so the primary difference here is that this is a token id and then this is just the quantity so let's go ahead and maybe like just do two three and four so we got have four tokens of token three we got three tokens of token two and two tokens of token one and then the associated files the one PNG, we have the two and we have the three. So we should be seeing these three images that will be posted on Rarible or Open Seas. So let's go ahead and control S. Uh, we will get to go to this particular icon. Uh, go ahead and compile it. I already have it auto compiled and you can just do control S and it'll be fine. Uh, we want to see that green check mark. Uh, go over here and then this is where we are going to be connecting our wallet. So go ahead and click on injected web three. Um, log in and I just went ahead and logged in and we want to change this contract to most simple mint ERC and notice that you can change this to be whatever you would want it to be like uh, test and then if you do save uh, this will actually change its name so let's change that back actually most simple mint ERC associated there and then do a quick save and then go ahead and deploy that it's gonna cost some gas fees, um, not nothing too much. We have 
I think like 0.12, it could be Ethereum. So let's go ahead and let that load. And we can go ahead and view this on the Ethernet. Uh, so as we can see here, this is where it is being uh, indexed into the actual chain, the, the rink and B chain. And this is our contract creation. This is where the address is going to be. So let's go ahead and wait. And voila. Okay. So we have now seen a successful block. A uh, particular deployment was successful and is on the chain. Let's go ahead and take a look at our two, I guess, validation points. So, so one thing that we can check out is just checking out the, uh, just using the API to see if our contract is valid. Uh, and this is just for the open seas, the open seas test net in particular. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab and then our token ID, let's just put that as one. Our contract address is where we want to go back to the ethernets and ethernet right here. Let's go ahead and click on this and then copy, uh, and then go over here and then just paste that right there and voila. So. We got a token URL timed out exception, which is sort of questionable, but like, you know, the open seas API is actually kind of slow. So let's check out Rarible. All we do is just paste this contract ID here and then voila, most basic upload, lots of typing. And then, you know, this is where our NFTs are located. So we know that that works. Let's see if we can uh, double check that. So most basic upload, lots of typing. Let's see, where is that located? Right here. So this is the name of our project. Name of our project. Most basic upload, lots of typing, and there are three. So there should be two, three, and four tokens. Let's see the one that was just loaded. So this is number two. Uh, let's go ahead and click on that. How many are right here? We have three right here. So that's a good sign. And then uh, this one just uploaded. This is number one, two, two. Okay, that's great. Yeah, so that matches out. So if we have a uh, token one, we have two of those, two of those, and then let's go ahead and check out the second one that was just uploaded and we have three that's associated with the token two. And once you see some of the content's not available yet, you can go ahead and click that refresh metadata and that should be good to go. Uh, just from personal experience, I thought that Rarible was a lot faster than OpenSea. Uh, sometimes it just takes a really, really long time for it to just load. Um, oh, there may, may be something here, lots of typing. Um, yeah, it just takes a, a while to load. And I don't even think that this is the, yeah, the most up-to-date one. So yeah, uh, we'll just be using Rarible for this video. Um, and yeah, hopefully OpenSeas actually loads this thing. Um, not sure why it's taking so long on OpenSeas, but uh, what happens if we don't want to, you know, manually type it or, you know, incorporate a for loop? There's actually a lot easier way of doing this. So let's go and check out the art collectibles. It's only like a few things that we would need to change two to be exact. But so you want to change this. This is the same thing uh, where we go to our YouTube test metadata, copy that CID, paste that right here. And then we want to change this to like um, our project name. So we call this like bulk upload NFT event on a YouTube demonstration event. That is good to go. So uh, this actually deploys our contract on the chain. So let's go ahead and change this to bulk NFT. Uh, yep, bulk NFT load as the name of our contract. Oops, go ahead and do that and get that green check mark. And that is really all we need to do. So this just goes ahead and deploys our contract. This is that gas fee right here. So our contract instead of our images compared to here is deployed. So let's go ahead and view that on the ether scan and that will take a little bit of time and voila, that array uploaded. So this is our contract name right here. Uh, and first, before we go that, this is my current contract, ad, uh, not contract address, but my wallet address. If we click on this and we can see this is our contract creation that was just created. And this was our other contract from our almost manually uh, just typing that in, but this is our um our chain right here let's go back and let's take a look at this contract so what we want from this contract since it was successful go ahead and copy this go back to remix now go to bulk mint nfts and this will go ahead and uh, upload all of our NFT nfts to rarible or OpenSea from the from the pinata ipfs so let's go ahead and go to the contract address 
right here. Go ahead and change that. You also might need to change your contract name if you went ahead and changed your uh, contract name over here for your um, contract. So go ahead and save that. And really, that's all you need to do. Don't worry about the um, exclamation points because it's looking for a Solidity code, but this is JavaScript. So to run JavaScript, we can go ahead, oops, decrease out of the artifacts and build info, the bulk mints. We just go ahead and right click that and then run. And this is just gonna be, uh, we also have, let's see, total, wait, wait, we want to reject it. We have, um, we have 15. <laughs> We have 15, that's all we need. So this is just um, our total NFTs and you know what, it's, what it is expecting. So let's go ahead and rerun that. And yep, this is our gas fee, not that much. Um, confirm, because this is a bulk load. It's gonna get all of the images that we have here, 15 to be exact, and it combines all those transactions into one transaction that's gonna occur on that specific contract address. Uh, so this is good, successfully batched mint balance of one. So let's go back to our contract address. This is the one that I think we were deploying to. Yeah, this is our contract address. Do control C on that and let that load a little bit now. And this is our bulk transfer over here. So it is now inside of the ethernet. So let's go ahead and pull up our wearable and put in our contract address. This is our bulk load. And voila, we have a bulk upload NFT YouTube demonstration, which is what we just typed in. And now instead of three, we have all of our uh, images and its associated metadata. Of course, it'll take a little bit of time. For the, just for the quantification, if you were to refresh, all of these particular NFTs have a quantity of one. And this is specified within the actual contract itself, within the art collectibles, within mint batch. Uh, so we have an amount section over here. So let's go ahead and copy that, go to bulk mint, and then look for the mint batch. And this is where you can specify however many NFTs per ID that you would want to go ahead and mint. Um, let's see if this still, yeah, still has that. Oh yeah, so yeah, I guess I one thing I noticed here, uh, OpenSeas only sees the, uh, the JSON uh, file as a like a numerical number not a hexadecimal which is might be a bug on open seas but i mean if you guys know of a solution let me know down in the comment section down below but yeah that's uh that's kind of questionable i don't know why open seas is having an issue but rareable is pretty fine uh, but nonetheless i hope to see you in my next video